Hello and welcome everybody, what's going on? It's me, Zomir TV, and we're gonna do the Bundesliga preview for the matches starting on the 5th of February. So let's go, let's begin. So, um, getting straight into it, obviously we have today, on Friday, uh, we have Borussia Mönchengladbach versus Werder Bremen kicking off, and that's gonna be the first Bundesliga match day, Bundesliga match of this match day. And uh, looking at two teams, you look at Werder Bremen, they've been doing quite well recently. Um, not that good, but they've been doing quite well in, in, in that sense. I mean, like, you know, they're doing better than, uh, than I would expect them to. But you look at Gladbach and they haven't really started um, the second half of the season that well. And they really should be doing much better. Now, that's why I just think Gladbach, they're the better team. They've got a better coach. Um... And, and they're playing at home, which is obviously a huge factor. They're playing at the Brussels Park. So, um, I think Gladbach is going to win that match. I don't know the score, but I've got a feeling. Of, I, I don't know why, but I've got a feeling about a 3-1. I just feel Gladbach will concede one. And I do think it's going to be a 3-1. And I think they're going to win 3-1. But yeah, that's what I think. Gladbach should win 3-1 against Werder Bremen. What do you guys think? Something in the comment section down below. Next up, we have Eintracht Frankfurt versus Stuttgart. Um, look at the two teams. Stuttgart, they've got a lot of young quality players. They've got a lot of talent, and whatnot. But they're not doing too well. You look at Frankfurt. They've got, you know, they've got a few experienced, a few key players that um, that aren't performing as they should be, and um, they're just like in a kind of a mid-table, struggling kind of position where you would expect them to be much higher up, a little bit like around eighth, maybe ninth place. Um, you know, maybe a bit higher than that. And uh, they're not performing right now, but they are playing at home, and that's where the key difference in that match will lie, in my opinion. Because I think both teams, if they were to play um, at a neutral ground, I think it would be end up as a draw. I think it would be like a one-one draw. But because Frankfurt is playing at home, uh, I'll go over like very close win, like a two-one win, and that's why I think um, Frankfurt will win two-one against Stuttgart. Tell me what you guys think. Um, next up. Ingolstadt versus Augsburg. Um, straight away, Augsburg, they've not been playing too good lately. They've been struggling a lot. I mean, they've had, you know, they, they, this season they've not been that good. Last season they were absolutely phenomenal, but this season they're really struggling. And the fact that Weinzel, he's rumored to be leaving at the end of the season, that just spells bad troubles for them, considering that next season is going to be much more difficult for them, losing such a quality coach as Weinzel. Um, but you look at how they've been doing this season, and they've not been doing too well. They're obviously still in the Europa League. Um, but they're not too. They're not too. They're not doing too great, and they're not doing too well. Whereas Ingolstadt, they're yeah. You wouldn't expect too much from them, but they're doing well in, in terms of where they expect themselves to be. So they're doing well in that regard, and they're playing at home. Now the question is: Is home advantage going to be enough against a struggling a struggling Augsburg? I don't know. I don't know. So I, I I've got a feeling about a draw in this one, just because I feel like Ingolstadt they're gonna try to go for it. But Augsburg's quality, Augsburg's individual quality will just see them through. And that's why I think this will be a draw. I think that Ingolstadt will play a better game. But Augsburg will just get that goal through individual quality. And that's where this match will end up as a 1-1 one, one draw. Um, next up, we have Hannover 96 versus Mainz. Now, you're looking at Mainz. You know, they've got some great individual quality. In, great individual quality um, through some great players that they have in their team. And you look at Hannover, who... They're, yeah, you don't know where to, you don't know really how to judge them because one week they'll play pretty good and next week they'll play absolutely terrible. So you'll it's basically what kind of Hanover you'll get. And whereas with Mainz, you know you're kind of looking at um, are they going to be able to perform away? Yeah, are they able at home? I would give them the win easily, but away that's a that's a good question. I are, are, are they going to be able to do that? Um, so I'll go with a draw. I don't know why. I've just got a feeling about a lot of draws this weekend. And I do feel that it's going to be a another one-one draw. Just I don't know why. I just got that feeling that both teams are going to perform equal. I think it'll be like one of those really interesting games where both teams will have like 10, 15 shots on target, but only one goal. And that's what I think this match will end up as. So that's why I'm going with a one-one draw. Next up, Hertha Berlin versus Borussia Dortmund. Now looking at how Hertha Berlin have been performing, you know, in the Bundesliga. Um, this could be a close match. This could honestly be a close match, but obviously the favorite here is Borussia Dortmund. But looking at how obviously Hertha Berlin, the playing at home, um, you know, they've been doing amazing this season. Um, I think they're still fourth right now. They've been doing amazing this season, and uh, you look at Dortmund. They've been doing amazing this season. So you've got two teams that like to attack. 
um, that have key men that like to, that they like to attack with. Now the question is, are Dortmund going to play Aubameyang or are they going to play Ramos? Just because obviously Ramos will be returning to the club he's from. If they play Ramos, then I see this being a Hertha Berlin win. If they do play um, Aubameyang, then I do see that this being a Dortmund win. So it all depends really on which striker is going to play. Are they gonna are Dortmund going to go with sentimentality and play Adrian Ramos? Or are they going to go with uh, just clinicality? Or is that even a word, clinicality? No, it, just being clinical um, up front in Do uh, in. Aubameyang, so it really depends on who they play, but also Hertha Berlin, they're not going to make it easy, especially at home, so I think this match is either going to end up as a draw if Aubameyang plays, or Hertha Berlin will win if um, Adrian Ramos plays, and that's why I think this match, I I'll say, I, I do believe that they'll play Aubameyang, I don't think they'll play Adrian Ramos, so I do think they'll play Aubameyang, so I think this match will end up as a 2-2 draw, and one of the highest goal scoring draws of this match day because I think this match day is going to be pretty low on goals. Next up we have Schalke 04 versus Wolfsburg. Now that is an interesting match. Now besides obviously the Bayern Munich versus Bayer Leverkusen match, this could, they are, they are, they have three matches. Obviously the Hertha Berlin versus Dortmund, Schalke versus Wolfsburg and obviously Bayer Leverkusen versus Bayern Munich. Three very tasty matches. Unfortunately, two of them are happening at the same time. The Hertha Berlin and Dortmund and Schalke versus Wolfsburg match. So that's a bit of a shame. But um, the Schalke versus Wolfsburg match. Obviously, you're looking at Wolfsburg, how they've been performing in the second half of the season. They've been struggling a lot. They've, I think they've, they drew the first game and they lost the second game. Or they, they lost the first game and drew the second game. One of those two. Um, so they're still lacking a win. Whereas you look at Schalke, I think they really struggled on the first match. I think they lost that match. And in the second match, they actually won. So the match that happened last week, uh, I'm not too sure about that. But you're looking at those two teams. You know, you have individual quality on both sides. If you're gonna feel for Draxler just because he's gonna return back to you know playing out in Gelsenkirchen. So um, you know, you you you're gonna see a, it's gonna be a very 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 good match, and I can't wait for that match. Now you're looking at individual quality that individual young quality that both teams have you obviously have Draxler and you have Sané you have Maya basically Schalke the Knappenschmiede um they're, they're producing talents like no other team I've ever seen produce talents maybe Ajax in the 90s but you know that was before my time um I sound so I sound so young now but um you look at Wolfsburg obviously they've got a very good squad one of the best squads in the league and they've just got quality all around. They're not really a attacking team. They're not really a defending team. They're not really a team that likes to control the ball through the midfield. They're just an all-round team. Whereas Schalke, they really like to just get the ball, especially this season. They really like to get the ball and just try and go forward, which often leaves them exposed at the back. So it's going to be such a good game that you got every mistake will be punished. But I do think this match is going to be a win for Schalke. Um, so Wolfsburg will still be struggling to get their next win and the reason why I'm saying it's going to be a win for Schalke is because of uh, the way that Wolfsburg, um, the strike, the stress striking problems. You know, you have Schalke, they've got the key people that are gonna that can actually score the goals. You have Sané who scores goals sometimes but he's getting more and more consistent with it. You have Huntelaar, the Hunter, you have um, the Santo. So yeah, they have a lot of players that can actually score whereas Wolfsburg, um, Bastost is out. So they're relying on Cruiser, um, Draxler, Schürrle. Surely he hasn't been firing that well. Draxler, he scored, um, he scored a goal last week, I believe, but he's obviously not in the form that they were expecting him to be. He's had he's had some great games, but he's also had some he's also had some long periods of um, matches where he's done nothing. Then you have you look at Cruiser. Cruiser, he's been basically the main standout striker besides Bastos. So Wolfsburg, they're kind of lacking on a striking front. But Schalke, um, the, and they're playing at home Schalke, so I do think this match will go to Schalke, and I do think this match will be a 2-1 win to Schalke. Now, obviously, I'm going to get to Bayer Leverkusen versus Bayern Munich last, so we, we're going to look at Sunday's matches, we're going to look at Hamburg versus Köln. Um, you're looking at both teams, and both teams are, in my opinion, overachieving this season. Uh, I don't know Köln's exact league position right now, but I believe they're like in the top top 13, um, yeah, top 13 definitely, and um, they're not they're, they're doing pretty well, you know. Anthony Modest, he's firing goals, he's scoring goals, he's making goals. And for Hamburg, he obviously they're, they're playing above what anyone would expect, where anyone w would expect them to be. So, you're looking at two teams, you're looking at like the two teams form, both about equal, you know. 
um, Hamburg have had the much more difficult fixtures in this part of the season, um, the second part of the season, and Köln haven't had such difficult fixtures just yet. But I think this match, I think I see both teams as equal. So that's why I've. But Hamburg is playing at home, so you have to take that factor as well. And that's why I think it'll be like a one nil win to Hamburg. And the last match on Sunday is Hoffenheim versus Darmstadt. Now. Hoffenheim, they've been really struggling um, this season. I think they, I think they're the worst team away in the league. Um, but obviously they're playing at home on Sunday, but you know that just tells you how much they've been struggling. Hoffenheim, and you look at Darmstadt, they're not the biggest club in the world, um, but but they've been trying to go up the table. They've been trying to you know sustain being in the first league in the Bundesliga. Um, so this is going to be a very tasty match. I think this is going to be like the that match where you where a lot of goals happen, but not because of quality, but because of a lack of quality. And that's why I think this match will probably end up as a. I go with a four three win to Hoffenheim, uh, just because I want them to get back up the table because they've got the players to do so. They just haven't. They, those players just haven't turned up whatsoever. So that's why I do think that Hoffenheim is going to win this match four three. And like I said, I think this match will not be decided by quality. But by a lack of quality, so there'll there'll be very stupid mistakes in the game that will lead to these goals on both sides. But 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 but, but let me just get a sip because ah, I need my energy drinks in the morning. Um, we're looking at Bayer Leverkusen versus Bayern Munich. Now, Lewandowski. That's all, that's all there is to say. Lewandowski. He's been scoring goals for fun. Yeah, okay, let's not say for fun, but he's been the, our one player who's been scoring goals. In the first match there against Hamburg, he's got two goals. In a two in a match um, against Hoffenheim, he's got two goals. You look at Tasky, Tasky is out. He's not going to be playing that match, or it will be very likely. But I don't think he's going to play that match. So I'll get into like the formations and the key danger man in a separate video because that's what I want to do. I want to talk more about the match in itself, whereas right now I just want to talk about the game in general. Um, but you look at the two teams, you know, you, could, you look at Bayer Leverkusen, and you look at the danger man, you've got Chalonoglu on the free kicks, on the set plays, on, you know, corners, everything, but he hasn't actually been doing that this season, that's the funny thing, he's known as the set piece master, but he's not been really scoring set piece, I think he's had one set piece, and he's had, I think, four, four times, I think he had four, the post four times through the set pieces, but besides that, he's not actually been scoring them at all, um, which obviously, playing against Bayern, he scored a set piece last year, so the question is, will he do it this year again? I don't think so, just by the way this, his form has been. Now, he's still been pretty good uh, in, just in general in the game, uh, but not really a standout player. Then you look at Chicharito, he's been firing the goals, but now as soon as Chicharito and Kiesling, their partnership has been really amazing, and it really showed off against the match against Borussia Mönchengladbach um, just before the winter break, where both of them were just pure chemistry, we were just on a 100% chemistry level, and you you just looked at the match and they were like, you know, you thought, are they psychic, or can they read each other's mind, so seeing, or going to, or how are we going to see, um, if that's still going to be the case, you know, how that is still going to be, that, um, that, that link, that, that, you know, that they have such a great chemistry, will be interesting to see, obviously, Kiesling, he is the aerial fit, whereas, um, Chicharito, he's more of a, um, Inzaghi kind of player, he's more of an Inzaghi kind of player, so he looks for space, he tries to play off the last man, and he tries to get him behind, tries not to play offside, and that's basically how he plays. So obviously with us not having really any defenders whatsoever besides Batshtuba, and this could be dangerous because he's going he's gonna to have to basically handle um, keeping both Kimmich and Alaba you know, in the same line so they can play Chicharito offside. And he's going to have to deal with every aerial ball. Obviously, Alaba can help him. Kimmich is not that small either, so he can obviously help in aerial battles as well against Kiesling. And then you obviously have Bellarabi, who is just a pure pace whore. And he's just going to be able to run past everyone. That's the big problem here, because we don't have pace um, besides, obviously, Alaba um, in defense whatsoever. So, we're gonna, it's going to be an interesting match. Obviously, for us, the key danger man, we've got Robin playing, although he, it looks like... And um, Bill's reporting that he had a small knock um, during training today, yesterday, sorry. That he had a small knock during training yesterday, so he's a doubt. It's, it's not like, it's, he might still be playing, but he might get rested. Um, it, it's a 50-50, basically. He might get rested for this match and then play the match against Darmstadt. Um, not Darmstadt, but then play the next match in the DFB Pokal. 
or he might play this match um, and it's, you know it might not be too serious it was just sim small knock so nothing serious but Robin is not going to be playing this match um, I, I can't really say that Robin might not be playing this match but we have obviously Costa who hasn't been in that great form in the second half of the season so in the, you know not the w same way that he exploded in the first half of the season but obviously we're still just after the winter break so I'm going to give him some time obviously um, Coleman, he's had some very good performances and the last game he was basically invisible um, in the last game against Hoffenheim. So then you have obviously Müller, you have Vidal, um, you have Lewandowski, you have a lot of attacking players. You have Thiago obviously, you have a lot of attacking players that can really score goals out of nowhere essentially. But obviously it's defence where we lack, so this game could be a high scoring game because we have the talent, we have the players and the talent to score those goals but we don't have that offense to really keep the defense tight. Now the question obviously will be as well if Bernard will play, because if Bernard will play, then we've got a left back that likes to go forward as well. Um, if he doesn't play, I don't know if he's, he played a little bit last time, but I don't know if he's ready to play 90 minutes. If not, then okay, that's fine. If you are, if he is, um, yeah, if he is, then um, that's even better, because then we've got, uh, we've got a fullback who's going to attack again. Uh, Lamb, We'll probably play in midfield, obviously. I, I'm expecting us to have a free man defense, um, and I obviously get into that in a separate video, as I said. But this game, I can see it being a high scoring game, and I do think the score will end up as a 2 3. So, a 3 2 win for Bayern Munich, um, obviously, by Leverkusen playing at home, 2 3. And I do think that Lewandowski will get another two goals with, ooh, let's say, Miller getting a third goal. Um, for Bayern's side, obviously, and then for Leverkusen, I think the two goals are going to come from one from Chicharito and two from Kiesling. But that's what I think, people. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. As always, people, you can rate, you can comment, and you can favorite this video. Can you even still favorite this video? I don't know if you can still favorite this video, but you know, try and favorite it if, if you can. <laughs> but um, you know, tell me what you think in the comment section down below. As always, people, you can rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Really, favorite, try it. Um, and as always, people, peace out and have a nice day.